Hey, hey, food explorers. So I wanted to get this podcast like done and recorded and published and everything today because I didn't realize today, July 21st, is the full moon today. And the full moon's name is actually the Buck Moon. So if you're thinking, what the heck is that? I'm going to tell you all about it in just a moment. So what on earth do these moon phases, cycles, and everything like that mean? A few videos back, I talked about the strawberry moon. And so that was the time of the year when you would start to look at harvesting. Strawberries are ripe. They're the first ones of the season. And you want to get picking them. Well, as we actually move into July, the beginning of July is when we typically stop picking strawberries. And we move into what is called the buck moon. It's happening today, July 21st. And this is when we typically see our deer uh, with their antlers. So their antlers will kind of be, you know, growing. They'll be getting that velvet. In nature, it's the time that we start harvesting um, because a lot of what we've grown for the season at this time of the year is ready for harvesting. It's gotten big enough. Um, I saw in my research a funny thing that said knee high 4th of July, knee high for the 4th of July. And so, you know, in the USA, that is their big celebration, their Independence Day. And so you're looking for the corn to be ready so that you can have your big, your barbecue and your, you know, corn on the cob and all that. But the other thing uh, about this uh, phase of the moon that we are in is that um, in Celtic cultures, this moon, uh, they would call the wort moon or the herb or the mead moon. And so wort or wort would be things like you know, different herbs like St. John's wort or louse wort or all these sort of medicinal herbs and plants that were perfect at this time of year to start harvesting. Also with herbs at this time of the year, it was when you could start harvesting them so that they could continue to cultivate and you weren't harvesting them and then the plant would basically die. There was enough foliage on the plant at this time of the year where the plants could basically re, uh, what's that word, where they do the thing, regenerate. <laughs> Regenerate. I have had a couple coffees today, but apparently it's not helping with my brain function. Uh, the other thing was it was the ideal time to gather herbs. So this is all sort of right now happening during the buck moon. And I love this, um, you know, looking at what's happening sort of agriculturally what things are right now ready and available uh, in each moon phase and the names that were sort of traditionally given to the moons are relating very much to what's in season, what you should be focusing on. The other thing, um, so mead, so buck moon right now, also sometimes called the mead moon. And that is because to make mead, what do we need? We need honey. And in July, we are full bloom of all the amazing flowers that are out there. And so this is a great time for honeybees to be, you know, buzzing along and doing their little bee work and creating lots of honey. And so at this time of year, it was a great time to start the process of making mead. And so you kind of gather up all the honey and get everything ready for that. And I just, I, I keep, you know, when I start to do research for an article and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, I love these sort of tie-ins from different places. But I also wanted to uh, do an episode today, another little solo sode for you guys. We are still in a heat wave. We are melting. We've been taking our vendor friends like cold drinks because they are literally melting on the pavement. I don't even know what the temperature was today. Jason did the uh, temperature with the uh, thermometer on the pavement and I, it was a lot. And our, our vendor friends are looking pretty 
um, drained of life force at this point. So we went out to the markets today and kind of, you know, chatted with some of them. But uh, the other thing that's kind of coming up in August is a whole series of events called Open Farm Days. And so Open Farm Days is where um, many of the farms all across Alberta and, and Open Farm Days, wherever you are at, check to see if you have an Open Farm Days that is happening because there's a lot of places. So Alberta is not the only place in the world that does Open Farm Days. There's lots of different provinces and counties and countries that do this. And it's a great time to celebrate the harvest, celebrate what farms and farmers are doing. And most farms at this point, so the open farm days in Alberta are going to be August 17th and 18th. Most farms are at like peak season for all of the things that they're growing. So, you know, the farms look amazing. They're full of life. And then you can come and you can learn. And so for Alberta Open Farm Days, um, it's really funny this year. It's the year of the alpaca. And if you're thinking to yourself, there's alpacas in Alberta. Indeed. Indeed, there are. I wrote, I wrote a little note here. Let's look and see. Canada has alpacas. Alberta has the second largest amount of alpacas and llamas. In Canada, Ontario has the number one spot. They have the most alpacas and llamas. And so a lot of farms have them because you can get um, from their coats. You can uh, harvest for making um, fabric and wool and all those great things you can make with alpacas. They're very soft. They have a really good disposition. They're pretty easy to care for do well in our climate. And so we have a lot of alpacas. So for open farm days this year, it's the celebration of the year of the alpaca. And during those two days, there's a lot of events happening. I'm going to post a link to the open farm days, Alberta website in the show notes, because I mean, I, there's no way I could even list all of the events that are happening during those two days. Now, some of the farms have um, other different events happening. So there's some farms like Bar OA, which is a flower farm. They actually, so they're a family run flower farm. They actually have been doing on each of the full moons of the month. So this month today being the buck moon, um, they've been doing farm dinners on each of the moons so they actually um for theirs they called it with uh sort of reference to the celtic versions of the herb moon and uh next month august's full moon is called the sturgeon moon and so they have another dinner right uh around the same date so that's actually on august 19th and open farm days are the 17th and 18th and so bar OA Flower Farm has been doing these dinners on each of the full moons. So you go and you tour the farm and then you get to sit down for a long table table dinner out amongst the flowers and they've got different chefs. There's a farm called Prairie Gardens and they've been doing just incredible farm sort of long table dinners again sort of all throughout the summer and then they'll have stuff sort of around these farm day events. There are farm visits, farm tours, uh, you pick farms that you can go to. There's all the different culinary events, which there's a lot. Like, I think Jason and I will try and figure out what we're going to go to. A couple years ago, our friends that own Stone Post Farms, so their farm used to be out as you would leave Edmonton and you would head west towards Jasper National Park. Their farm was on the way out there. They've now subsequently moved their farm to their family farm, which was in southern Alberta. But we actually went out there and it was such a fun event. So you got to tour around the farm. You got to see how they, you know, managed their different livestock um, groups that they had on the farm, how they moved them around so that they didn't have, you know, soil erosion in one spot because, you know, the cows were, you know, kind of eating all the grass in one area. And they had, a, they brought a sort of one of our celebrity chefs here in, 
And oh my gosh, how many, I'm trying to think how many courses it was. It was probably maybe four course dinner and you got put at tables basically out in the pasture. It was magnificent. We had such a fun time. And that was um, a couple of years ago. And then these last couple of years, we haven't had a chance to go to anything because I've either been away teaching or we've had something going on during sort of the the official open farm days. So I'm going to actually look through and see what we might be able to do this year. And maybe we can go to one of the events. So I'll keep you posted if that's going to happen. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to tell you about the open farm day. So in Alberta this year, they're celebrating the 10th anniversary. It is in line with the sturgeon moon, which the sturgeon moon, historically, sturgeon was, uh, it's a fish. It's a, a lake um, fish that was very important um, as sustenance for many original peoples that were here uh, in North America. Unfortunately, the abundance of the sturgeon that we used to have, we just don't have anymore. Um, you know, ooh, humans, um, <laughs> we wreck, we just wreck everything. So the name still, of course, sticks. Sturgeon just aren't as prolific as they used to be where it was just you know you'd go to the lake and sturgeon everywhere what do you want to eat uh we don't have that quite as much anymore but that still is the name for august's full moon so two days for alberta farm days 17th and 18th of august and let me just see here what else did i write down oh something i also didn't know so on the open farm days website really like go around the website and check out what it is because there were so many interesting fun facts. So they had things like about the bison that are in Alberta and about the bees in the apiaries. Something I did not know, Alberta is the largest honey producer in Canada. I did not know this. And we're actually the third largest honey producer in North America. One of our favorite um, farms is Good Morning Honey. We actually were vendor buddies with them. So we were actually vendor neighbors for a whole season of one of our outdoor farmer market seasons. And I just loved being beside them and their honey is incredible. And they have their um, beehives in different parts of Alberta because depending on what the bees are eating, what kind of flowers they're eating, the honey is going to have a different taste. So, you know, you'll see things that say like clover honey or wildflower honey. And that's because that's what the bees primarily were eating. And so then the honey takes on the taste of those different flowers. It's super duper fascinating. I absolutely love it. The other really cool thing. So I was kind of looking through um, all the different offerings uh, as I'm trying to decide what we should go and do. But there was one and it was called a train ride and a farm to fork. So it was a train ride through sort of the rural area in Alberta, going out to Forestburg, Alberta. And then they were having a farm to fork dinner as well. So you got to do the train ride and the dinner. And I thought, well, now that would be super duper fun. So we'll see. Maybe, maybe that's the one that we do. I'm not sure. At this point, I am home. <laughs> But my life changes frequently. It It is the way it is. The um the entrepreneurship course that I'm teaching right now is going really, really well. I'm super thrilled with the students. They are doing an amazing job. And so I actually have two more weeks of um, the entrepreneurship course with them. And it's been really fun to see as they reach milestones in their businesses and sort of remembering some of the milestones from my business that I grew like the Colleen's chocolates business and now seeing what we're doing with our food explorer podcast. And I think the last thing that I have to tell you guys, let me just look through my notes. I always have notes. I have notes on everything. The last thing that I wanted to say to you guys was the articles that we just did on uh, Substack, we ended up with four articles all about herbs. And seeing as today is the buck moon, 
and that coincides with the other tradition of it being the herb moon, this would probably be a perfect time to read those articles. They're super fun. Um, Jason and I have fun banter back and forth. Uh, he says that I say taco wrong. I don't say taco wrong, but I do call them lozengers. I don't care. I don't care. Lozengers. I'm going to say it. That's what they're called. That's not what they're called, but that's just how I like to say it. But with that, I just wanted to really have like a nice, quick, short and sweet to let you guys know, celebrate tonight. It's the Buck Moon and it's the July full moon. Alberta Open Farm Days is coming up. Check and see where you live. If you also have some kind of a farm days that's happening, let us know if you end up going to like a long table dinner or some kind of event. It's such a great way to connect with the farmers. I mean, the farmers, this is who feeds us. Farmers feed us. I'm not growing my own food in my yard. My, I have dandelions in my yard. If anybody needs dandelions, just come on over because I have dandelions for days. My neighbor was laughing at me the other day. He's like, dandelions are like hip, hip height now. I'm like, I don't care at this point. It's I have no time to be in my yard. But you get to also meet your neighbors, really. Like the people that are part of your community that attend these dinners it's really kind of fun. You connect with them on a different level. You have something inherently very easy to talk about. The farm, the food, who's making the different things. And so it's pretty awesome. I am keeping my fingers crossed that the heat wave will end in time for me to go and do my two farm visit interviews. This week is a no-go. It's supposed to be like 36 degrees on Tuesday or some insanity like that. So I can't go to the farmers and be like, well, you're super stressed out right now. Do you want to do a podcast interview? They 100% do not want to do a podcast interview. <laughs> I, I know this for sure. But I am hoping that the week after it's going to cool down a little bit and we can actually get some of this done. So with that, whatever you're doing today, I hope you're having an amazing day. If you're in the heat wave like we are, I hope you have a cool basement. I'm in the basement right now. It's nice and cool. And uh, I'm enjoying not melting. This is this is a good thing. Hit that subscribe button. Smash that subscribe button, actually. Make sure that you follow us. We always have something new every week. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a fantastic day. Bye.